Hello, lovelies. Welcome to year three of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. If you're new to the show, please remember, back it up and see what you've been missing. Those of you who love it already, remember, I need you. I need you to like, to share, review, subscribe, and maybe even consider clicking that patron button. Let's grow our community so that we can grow and learn together. So I want to talk about indignance. Do you know what that means to be indignant, to have indignance? Maybe it's an SAT word. Um, indignance is um, the enemy of joy. It is anger or annoyance at what we perceive as unfair. It's a uh, displeasure when we think something is unjust or offensive or insulting. I, I think it's simply what's unfair. Now, this can be justified. Indignance can be justified, right? But all too often, it's unjustified. It's selfish. It's blind. And it is the destroyer of our peace of mind. We are not allowed to be indignant, or we're allowed, <laughs> but if we are, it is for sure a lesson, right? It is a, a feeling that comes up that is telling us learn, grow, take this apart, dissect it, figure out what it is you need to know about you, right? If you're indignant because of someone else's emotions, you're wrong. You don't get to be annoyed or angry because someone else has emotions. You can have your own emotions. You can decide that this is not the kind of person you want to be around. But you are not justified in your indignance. You're making yourself miserable. And you are taking a responsibility for. You're letting something be yours that is not. You shouldn't be indignant about someone else's pain. You're going to be angry about it. You're going to be annoyed with someone else's pain. There are people who have invisible illnesses. These are the hardest ones, right? Whether it's a, a disease that has no outward symptoms, or I talk to a lot of people who have a partner who has chronic pain due to some kind of injury or arthritis or something. And they often get so exhausted listening to their partner complain about it that they end up losing empathy for them, sympathy even, because they can't see it. I can appreciate that, okay? I, I can recognize that that is difficult. But to become indignant, to decide it is unfair, it's not unfair. It's not unfair to you. It's not even unfair to them. It sucks for them, okay? But it's not unfair. Something has happened in their body that was the trigger. It may sound like a weird comparison, but I find it similar to when I see people saying that their kids have grown up too fast, right? That time has gone by too fast, that, that time is too short. I know that for some people, those are just words, but my children have been on this planet for 10 and a half years. If they weren't 10 and a half, something would be terribly wrong. Time has not gone by too fast. It's not unfair. Time isn't robbing me of anything. Time is giving me everything. Now, if we're going to be indignant about someone's beliefs or behaviors, that's not fair either. Let me tell you why. We can be angry that someone is racist or bigoted or whatever else. We can be angry that someone treats other people badly. But if we are walking around in our indignance, in our anger and our annoyance, that's not fair. We have to move through it. You cannot live in indignance. It will rob you of your peace of mind and your joy. You must either accept them as they are or let them go. Anything less is either selfish or self-punishment. Self-abuse fed by worthlessness. You deserve more. It can be very difficult, not gonna lie. I know a lot of people 
who have had big family crises this year. It's 2020. There have been families who have fallen apart over differing COVID beliefs, over differing political beliefs. And to say that some of these aren't big enough to be the ending of a relationship isn't valid. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you find that someone's belief system is based on something that you find grossly negligent or <laughs> I'm trying not to bend too far in my own political beliefs, gross. If you learn something about them that shows you that who they are is too far off from who you are and what you believe to be good in the world, it is okay to bless them on their way. It is not okay to sit around and stew in your indignance and to hold it over them. There are some things that we can accept, right? I have one <laughs> client in particular who has chosen to accept that her 98-year-old grandmother is racist. The woman is uh, mostly dementia and grew up in a different world in a different time, according to my client, and she is able to look the other way when her 98-year-old grandma says something that she finds terribly offensive. Her sister, on the other hand, she cannot. She cannot continue the relationship with her sister because of the gross belief system that she has that makes other individuals worthless based on their race or sexuality. She cannot justify being in presence of someone who looks at others and believes that they deserve less, or in this case, violence, because of this differ. She would be wrong to just be indignant. She would be wrong to just be near her and to be angry and annoyed with her. She has to choose accept her or don't. Because I, I get that this might seem harsh, right? But we need boundaries. There are things that we must grow through, right? Everyone who's ever been in a family or a relationship, a friendship, any kind of connection, shit, a pet, <laughs> okay? There are going to be things. There are going to be things that annoy you. There are going to thing, be things that even anger you. But is it unfair? Is it really unfair? Most of the time it's not. Most of the time it is more unfair of us to be upset that the other person isn't behaving the way we want them to, right? It is unfair of me to decide that my husband has to be in a good mood just because I want him to. It is unfair of me to decide that my kids have to like the hobby that I wish we could do together. That is unfair. And for me to be indignant about that is selfish. It would be a death of joy. Instead of finding something we can both enjoy or doing it on my own, using it as an opportunity to enrich in a relationship with someone else, it would be wrong for me. It would be selfish. If I were to give up that thing altogether, let's say it was a hobby, let's say it's knitting. I, I don't even know how to knit. <laughs> okay, but let's say I loved knitting and it was my fantasy that my children would want to do it with me and they thought it was the most horrible, boring thing in the world. It would be selfish of me to be upset with them because they didn't enjoy it. But if I then just gave it up, if I gave up something I cared about, doing it for myself, doing it, finding someone who would share it with me outside of who I wished it could be, that would be self-punishment, self-abuse. Am I making sense, beloved? Indignance is the death, the enemy of joy. I grew up hearing, and probably most of you did too, that life is just not fair. 
uh, somehow that's comforting sometimes, right? Some people find that comforting. Okay, life's not fair, so I shouldn't expect things to be fair. But that's sort of giving us permission to walk around indignant. Beloved, everything happens for a reason. Even if it seems like it sucks. And I'm not saying this from some naive position with a gilded life. I have lived a hard life. My 46 years, I have lived through experiences that most people never touch. I'm not asking for any kind of sympathy or even empathy. What I'm saying is it's fair. It might have sucked, but it's fair. My life, my road, my path, my awakening, it's fair. I've had to make choices all along the way. I have had to decide who or what to accept and who or what to release to let go of. And I have let go of a lot, of a lot of people, of a lot of things. That is not selfish, even though some of those people think it is. I choose to be who I am and sit in my authenticity. Just this morning, I was reminding my son, because he asked, <laughs> of a conversation that I had with a family member that was the ending of that relationship. It doesn't end the history that we had. It doesn't end the experiences that we shared that were positive and negative, frankly. It doesn't take away the appreciation that I have for some of the things that this man did for me. But this person in particular said that me, that I, that my husband, that my children needed to be who he wanted us to be. That it was our job to just be who he wanted us to be when he wanted us to be it. There's no way I could do that. There is no way. To do that, to live in that falseness, would fill me with such indignance. It would be both of the negative things I'm talking It would be unbelievably selfish to do that to my children and my husband. It would be selfish of me to say that it's too uncomfortable, it's too hard to end this long relationship, to end this family connection. It's too hard. So I want all of them to suffer and pretend so that I can avoid a little bit of discomfort. And it also would be really a lot of self-abuse. It would be so much worthlessness to say I don't deserve peace of mind. To put up a facade for this person would be torture. It would be walking around in indignance. Depending on the day and time, it would either be anger or annoyance. And in every instance, it would be what I was perceiving as unfair. Because the only things that are unfair are the things you have no control over. And beloved, you have control over everything. I do believe in the real world. It's not like you're going to manifest a million dollars today, okay? <laughs> I tell my kids all the time, if I could change one thing, I would just have so much money that I never had to worry about anything, right? But that's not practical. What is practical is that we can make decisions, right? Sometimes it takes a long time to get them. I've got one client right now who's been looking for a job for a long time and she's very frustrated and I get it. And she feels like she does not have any control over whether or not she gets to work, but that's not true. She just doesn't have control over when or how quickly she's going to get that job that she wants. And the truth is she could have a job today if she was willing to take whatever job the universe opened up for her, but she is not. She wants the kind of job she wants. So something perceived as unfair that's actually not. I mean, who's to say if she gave in to that job that becomes available to her, maybe she'd find she was good, good at something she didn't know she was good at. Maybe she'd meet the love of her life. Maybe just ending the cycle of not working would energetically open the channel to that job she really wants. 
The only thing unfair is when we give up on ourselves. I overheard my kid's guitar teacher, Stephen, who I adore, by the way. Um, he's always saying really brilliant things. And I would have loved to give him credit for this, but he told me, um, I think he said it was Nietzsche. <laughs> Whatever. He said it in the right moment to my kids, and I overheard it, and it's been eye-opening, and it's appropriate right now. He said that laziness is just fear. That makes a lot of sense. we got to think about laziness in a lot of terms. If you just think of laziness as I sit around and I don't do anything, you're giving the word lazy too narrow of a definition. Laziness is not standing up for yourself. Laziness is continuing a relationship that's not healthy, just staying the way that we are. Laziness is not taking whatever job you can find if you need a job, whether it's financially or because you need the heck out of your own head, <laughs> right? Laziness is just fear. Fear of hard work, fear of change, fear of effort, fear of judgment, fear of whatever it is. It was hard, but I set myself up to never sit in indignance. Well, I say that. I touch it all the time, and I bet you do too, in subtle ways. Your spouse doesn't react the way that you thought they should. That's just not fair. I need them to X, Y, Z. Well, no, the only person being unfair is us. Indignance is the enemy of joy. I talked to someone today, just today, an hour ago. Her family is toxic. Okay, her mother's toxic, her sister's toxic. You define toxic in any way that you personally define it, and the answer is yes. That is how toxic this family is, all of the things. She does not want to let go of her family. And that's fine. She's not willing to just separate herself from her to from their toxicity. And at any time she tries to address anything with them, it doesn't go anywhere. It just ends up being painful for her and it doesn't make any progress in the relationship. And so she asked me today, she said, so is it just not worth my time? Should I just continue to be their doormat? No. No, it's not worth your time and you should not continue to be a doormat. You have a choice. Remove yourself or accept them. So accepting them doesn't mean she has to be a doormat. She's choosing to accept them. So she has to choose to alter her behavior. Talk to them about things that are easy conversations to have. Have conversation changers in mind to shift to the topic. Do things to protect herself. Beloved, yes to both. If you're going to choose to accept them, you continue. You have to make choices. Otherwise, she's going to be an indignance. It is unfair. And what she's doing is unfair to herself. Are you following me? It's unfair. She is being unfair to herself to say, my choice is either no relationship or be a doormat. That's what's not fair. It's not fair for her to expect that she can say the right word to them and make them be different people. They're adults. So that's not unfair to, that's not fair to them. And it's not fair to herself to think that the only alternative is to be their doormat. There's always an answer. One of the arguments that I feel spinning around is, you know, what about when someone dies? Isn't it unfair if someone loses their parent or their child or their, their loved one. Beloved, you can sit in unfair till you're done with it, but it's not unfair. What's unfair is if you decide you are not whole enough to continue to live without that person. And that is you being unfair to you. It is unfair if you decide I'll never love anyone again. That is unfair to your loved one. You're putting too much pressure on them to be responsible for anything you ever loved. And whether they're in their body or in spirit, that's not fair. When we remove the idea that life is unfair, we find ourselves more able to trust the unfolding. To recognize that everything is working together to good. 
the uncomfortable conversations, the new beginnings, the endings that we wish never had to happen. It is unfolding. I'll leave you with a, a metaphor a client actually shared with me after she lost a friendship due to all kinds of things, not the least of which was political. But as she mourned the loss of that friendship, she had an aha moment that life was like a play and that the universe was both the writer and director. And that if the universe just kept piling new characters on the stage, before you know it, the stage would be full and it would be chaos and there wouldn't be no meaningful interactions, that every once in a while a character has to leave the stage. And that it's not our job to chase after the character that goes off the stage. We're not supposed to run backstage and trip over the lights and all the things and go chasing after them. We're meant to keep our feet on the stage and continue to read the script and see what twist and turn comes next. What character enters the stage, whether it's from our past or completely unknown. Beloved, we need to trust the unfolding that it's all fair. It's all fair if we learn and grow. And that if it's unfair, that's on us. That is laziness, which is really just a disguise for fear. And we have to remember what fear means. F E A are false expectations appearing real. Sometimes it's false experiences appearing real. Sometimes it's both. If we expect things <laughs> to turn out the way that we have in our simple human minds, and we label anything that doesn't work out that way as unfair, we will be unhappy. But if we trust the unfolding, we resist fear and the trappings of laziness, fearlessly take the next step, one step at a time, the next right step, that's it. Then we will be on the path to contentment contentment, not complacency. There's a difference. The next right step is all it takes. Until next time, beloved, namaste. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today for this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. It is my privilege to have your ear and your time. Come out, find me on social media, visit one of my seminars, book an educational session. However it is that I can support you, I'm here. Remember, beloved, there's a little brunette with a podcast who's got your back.